70. The Switch. 70 games for it. 70. 70 Nintendo Switch games coming soon, maybe, uh, who really knows? It's been a very weird year and it <laughs> doesn't really seem to be getting any better. I really do hope this video helps you find a ton of games that you can be excited to play on the console because I know that this year with Nintendo and Switch, things were pretty quiet. Whether that was because of COVID or Nintendo was just always going to have a quiet year this year, I don't know. And even right now, going into the end of the year, looking ahead to 2021, but allow me to try and fix that as much as possible because I have found a ton of really fun games. And I've even scraped the bottom of the barrel to throw in a bunch of this could be fun, but we're gonna have to wait and see because I wanna give you as many options as possible and try to give you all something to look forward to right now. We have so little many games to get through so I'm just I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stop blasting through them I'd really appreciate if you could hit that subscribe button and the bell by the way look how many of you haven't hit the bell what but first uh, this little guy and I want to thank you all for your insane support on the channel recently in fact speaking of support on the channel I would appreciate it if you could also help support the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey with thousands of inspiring classes. My favorite classes are the ones that teach me how to be a better video editor, like Geordie's classes on Adobe Premiere where I learned to do this. Yeah, you're jealous now. You could take the same course and you could learn how to do the exact same thing. If it worked, I don't know, I might screw it up. There's classes on film and video, creative writing, graphic design, and everything you and your adorable cats could ever dream of. Apparently my face smells like something. Okay, Kimberly, how affordable is Skillshare? Very affordable. Very affordable. At less than $10 a month, that is insane considering how much you can learn. But here's the catch. You can get- Come a little closer. It's a secret. You can get Skillshare Premium for free if you click my link down below. But it's only for the first 1,000 people that click the link. And believe me, they go fast. So don't even think about it. You don't, you don't have time to think about it. Click the link and then worry about what you're gonna learn later. So thank you Skillshare for sponsoring the video. Thank you Simon for being adorable the whole time. You can pay him in cat food. Oh, I pay him in cat food. You see this hunk? Yeah, that looks like a hefty deposit to me. And he ain't paying out dividends. Well, actually, he does. He throws up all oh, the time. no, no, no. And he poops constantly. All right, back on with the video. Chucklefish games make by far the best pixel art I have seen in video games. And Eastward is no different. This one is highly anticipated by me. <laughs> the post-apocalyptic world looks gorgeous, and I can't wait to explore and discover its bustling towns, curious campsites, and shady forests. It is, it's just so cool looking. Chris Tales being an indie game blows my mind. Not only is it beautifully hand-drawn and skillfully animated, you can experience this classic JRPG style game in the past, present, and future simultaneously. I'm not even sure what that means, but I'm excited to find out. So Fuser uh, looks interesting and it's actually releasing really soon. You play the role of a DJ and you can splice up very Various chords, vocals, and beats from multiple songs to create unique tracks. The best part is that the game's soundtrack is actually pretty decent, so you'll be working with everything from 50 Cent and Aha to Billie Eilish and The Weeknd. And that's before the DLC hits with 25 more songs. Erasure! Show a little respect. Sukuna of Rice and Ruin. Ah, this is this is this a good one. I've been playing it actually. It's a side-scrolling beat-em-up style game with loads of different combos and upgradable attacks. There's also a whole nother farming element where you can grow crops and rice that help you power up. I'll be reviewing this one at some point, but yeah, it's good. I don't know how to just dance. Uh, it's just dance. It's just dance. Just dance. All right. <laughs> Coming in with possibly the worst trailer for a video game I've ever seen, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit Remastered. If you like the original, 
here you go. Finally, a Kingdom Hearts game comes to Switch. Is it the first, second, or third game? Oh, no. Oh, well then, is it one of the 16 other random spin-off games or that apparently aren't spin-off games and they are part of the series and they're integral to the story? Oh, no, no, it's not one of those. E oh, it's a rhythm game? Is the door... O it's over here? Oh, okay. <laughs> For real, though, it actually, it does look pretty fun. Hey, uh, so Fortnite, uh, it's releasing physical again. There's no game in the case. I feel like I have to say that in these videos for the parents out there. Uh, this pack is just full of like skins and accessories and it's gonna cost you money. It's free. You don't have to buy your kid Fortnite. That's how they get you. Sniper Elite 4 is a brutal third person tactical shooter stealth game. If you've ever wanted to see skulls pierced by sniper bullets in slow-mo x-ray, this is the game for you. Tabletop Racing! Apparently, Tabletop Racing is only going to be sold physically at GameStop. So get ready to whack your Power Up Rewards card on the table. If you even want this game, I don't know, it's pretty cute, I guess. Journey to the Savage Planet, already impressively released digitally on the Switch earlier this year, but for you physical-only buyers, you can buy that physically this month in stores. Go for it. Hey, uh, it's a little game called Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. That's releasing this this month on the 20th I am very excited you can already play a free demo of the game on your switch and your save progress will carry over to the game when you get it for me though I'm just I think this I'm just gonna wait you know it's almost here just gonna wait so Kronos before the ashes is a prequel to the 2019 hit game remnant from the ashes a co-op game that I actually played with my friend on Xbox co-op and had a great time I really liked it now this prequel which was a VR exclusive game is getting re-released as a console game on switch in December I know that's a mouthful Empire of Sin is an upcoming turn-based strategy game about the mafia and Nintendo have been pushing this game harder than they pushed Pikmin 3 for some reason. Oh, it's my game! Immortals Phoenix Rising is coming to Switch. Everyone's favorite Breath of the Wild inspired open world RPG adventure game is landing on Switch the same day as everywhere else. I have two videos of me playing this game already on the channel so you can go and watch those to learn more about it. I love the John Wick movies. I, who doesn't? But a game based on them I, I just assumed it would be bad because movie tie-in games usually are. It's actually really good. I haven't played it yet and it's not releasing on Switch until December, but it's already out on PlayStation 4 and it has really good reviews. It's an action strategy game where you play on a timeline with elements of resource management using various moves and actions to defeat enemies and avoid being hit. Yeah, okay, I'm interested. Fire Emblem 30th Anniversary Edition. The very first game in the Fire Emblem series will launch in the West for the first time as a re-release on Nintendo Switch. It's also also getting a physical with a ton of cool stuff and collectibles, but good luck getting one. It was sold out in three minutes, and no, I, I, I couldn't get one. So, the $5 digital version it is for me. Hey, fatso, you ate too much on Thanksgiving again, didn't you? You're feeling a couple extra pounds around the waist, Christmas is around the corner. What can you do? Well, Fitness Boxing 2 is releasing uh, right before Christmas. Perfect timing to get into shape. Ori the Will of Wisps and Ori and the Blind Forest. I know both of these already released digitally on the eShop, but I wanted to let you know they are getting physical releases. In the 8th, the 8th of December. Uh -huh. That was my reaction when I saw they were making a Puyo Puyo and Tetris 2. Hey, what are they gonna do? Make a sequel to Tetris? Oh no, right. Yeah, it has an adventure mode. So there's a new adventure campaign mode, new features and other modes like a skill battle mode and, and probably more, you know. So, uh, there's this super robot fast paced mech fighting game called Override 2 launching on Switch this year. And I mean, it doesn't look bad. Competitive arena brawls, supercharged abilities and pilot versus pilot action. Oh, you had me at... There's nothing else to play on Switch this year, so I'll, I guess I'll grab this one. You hear that? That was a really good snap. Like, better than I usually do. Pokemon Snap is back. <laughs> at some point, supposedly, this before the end of this year. But, you know, Rona. 
Visually, it looks almost like the wild area in Pokemon Sword and Shield, but kind of worse. But it's Pokemon Snap. I'm excited. I can't wait. Let's go already, Nintendo. When's it releasing? Doom Eternal. Is anyone still look looking for this on Switch? Have we all already played it somewhere else because it's been forever? For anyone still waiting to play this one on the go, it's... It supposed to be coming. All right, well, barring any surprises, that's what we've got on Switch till the end of the year. Uh, next, I'm gonna go through the games coming early next year that have dates, so let's do that. Out of all the games I'd never heard of before making this video, Iris Fall might be the one I am now most excited for. It has absolutely striking visuals, an eerie tone, and honestly, a pretty sick website. With a wonderful hand-drawn art style and a fast-paced 2D hack-and-slash gameplay style, Bladed Fury legitimately looks freaking awesome. There are hundreds of games I wish I had time to play, and the original Alteria Riser is one that I wish I could pronounce, but I also want to play. It's a gorgeous looking JRPG with tons of personality, and one day, one day I'll play it. But until then, for those of you that have played it, the sequel is on the way to Switch in January. Th this is one of the cooler games on the list for sure. Hellpoint is an intense action RPG you can play solo or with a friend in local or online co-op. I had honestly never heard of this one before researching for this video, and while it, it looks kind of cool visually, I really couldn't tell what kind of game this was, so your guess is as good as mine. If you're not a fan of big nightmares and you prefer the, the tiny ones, ones. Little Nightmares 2 releases early February. It's a puzzle platforming horror adventure game. Hey, you remember that uh, sweet roguelike rhythm video game where you step and attack to the beat of a badass EDM soundtrack called yeah, The Crypt of the Necrodancer? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, the same one that was so good that even Nintendo hit up the developer and asked them to make a Zelda-themed version of the game. Well, Crypt of the Necrodancer and its DLC is getting a physical release next year, so that's pretty cool. So, unlike the recent Pikmin 3, which was literally just Nintendo taking an old file of one of their games, dumping it onto a cart, shoveling onto the shelf, and selling it back to us at full price retail with barely changing or adding anything, Super Mario 3D World is actually having some work done to it, including a whole new edition of something called Bowser's Fury, which we still don't really know much about, but considering it made the title of the game, I'd say it's a pretty expansive expansion onto the base game. You know, giving us a reason to actually buy it again. <coughs> we had a very recent update on Bravely Default 2. It let us know that we can start playing it pretty soon in February, and I gotta say, it looks Looks like it's come a long way since its initial reveal. It's giving me Octopath Traveler vibes, and we all liked that game, right? <laughs> right? Zenjion. Zenjion. Hmm. Zenjion is an action RPG roguelike, similar to Dead Cells, Moonlighter, or Hades, but this one has an anime-infused twist, and I do really like these kinds of games, so I'm gonna check it out. Directed by the creators of Sonic the Hedgehog and Nights into Dreams, Published by Square Enix, Balon Wonderful has everything going for it. But whenever I watch the trailer, something about it just feels kind of off to me. Uh, that said, never judge a book by its cover. And in March, I'll be giving it a shot. Oh, another big one, Monster Hunter Rise. It's a brand new Monster Hunter game coming exclusively to Switch March 26th next year. We got new monsters, new tools, new hunting partners, and even a new wire grappling hook thing to scale cliffs or get the height advantage for aerial attacks. It looks great. But Monster Hunter Stories 2 is where it's really at. For me, for me anyway. So honestly, if Nintendo didn't send me a review copy of the first Monster Hunter Stories back in the day, I probably would have never looked at it twice. But oh my gosh, did I end up loving it. Think Pokemon, but swap in everything Monster Hunter themed and add in a dash of adorable, and there you go, you got Monster Hunter Stories. Ever Forward is a strange, dreamlike action puzzle game where a girl is trapped in a strange world. The puzzles have multiple solutions, including teleportation and gravity control. I just thought it looked cool, so here it is. Azure Lane Crosswave is a 3D shooter game with cute anime girls blowing up ships. 
Honestly, it looks boring to me, but I'm getting desperate here, okay? <laughs> All right, here's a fun one. So according to GameStop, there's an interesting looking game called Poison Control Contaminated Edition coming to Switch in March. It, it kind of looks like a Persona clone game to me, but whenever I try to Google Poison Control Containment Edition or even just Poison Control, yeah, I mean, exactly what you'd expect. It just brings up Poison Control numbers and helplines. Indie platformer K's and the Wild Masks lands on Switch in March. It has a great old school SNES platformer vibe about it, so I'll be checking it out. Another JRPG I'm not very familiar with, to be honest. The fourth, Trails of Cold Steel launches worldwide on Switch in March. So, if you like that kind of thing, you should probably buy it. All nine freaking Star Wars Lego games crammed into one cart, maybe. They might make you download a bunch of them, but all in one purchase. Launches in May of next year, and I've never played none of them. They honestly look really great and hilarious, so that's gonna be a big time sink for me. After being introduced to the Yee series with the eighth installment on Switch, I can now proudly say that I'm a fan of the, the one game I played. But the announcement of a brand new ninth adventure coming to Switch got me all hot under the JRPG collar. And finally, for games with release dates next year, Disgaea 6. It's a strategy JRPG with a max level cap of 9999999999 and a max damage of 1 quadrillion. Oh, that's a lot of damage. I just want to say that this seems on paper to be an easy video, but it's not. Oh. <laughs> Just that. <laughs> XIII, or 13, I don't know, was a creative, cell shaded first person shooter released back on PlayStation 2, Xbox, and GameCube. And I loved it. Many people did, and we all wanted, no, needed a sequel to answer that cliffhanger of an ending. So imagine my excitement when I heard they're remaking the game, which doesn't really give us an ending to that cliffhanger at all, but it's something. This next one is arguably the biggest confirmed release for next year, and that's No More Heroes 3. We just got the first two games shadow dropped on the Switch's eShop, so jump on those ASAP and get caught up with these wacky action-adventure hack-and-slash series created by Suda one of my favorite and all-time best game directors. Inspired by The Legend of Zelda and Studio Ghibli movies, do I even have to say that Baldo is one of my most anticipated games of 2020? Wait, sorry. 2021. Thanks, this year. Uh, it's an action RPG with puzzles, exploration, and combat set in a crafted, hand-drawn open world, and just look at it, my god! They haven't officially pushed it back to 2021, but, uh, since it was supposed to release in summer of this year, and we've heard nothing since then, yeah, I'll see you next year, Baldo. Next year, Room Factory fans can play the fifth installment in the simulation RPG series. I have never played one, but apparently, you can tame monsters, explore a massive world, cultivate crops, and create friendships. Oh, and battle enemies to the death. Clutching at straws here, uh, we have Port Royal 4. <laughs> if you're one of the other four people that actually like these games, the five of us can pick it up next year. Digimon Survive had me at hello two years ago when it dropped an announcement trailer full of beautiful art that I can definitely vibe with and about four seconds of gameplay displaying the new turn-based RPG style. It seems like Digimon has attempted to grow with its audience, most of whom are in their late 20s to early 30s now, and I'm definitely down for it. Digimon Survive will feature multiple endings, and should wrong choices be made, characters will be killed! Yeah, this 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 ain't your run-of-the-mill Pokemon game, that's for sure. So this one's kinda weird as well, Dragon Quest Heroes 1 and 2. It was released in Japan the same day as the console launched on March 3rd, 2017. These games look really fun, they're technically part of the Dynasty Warriors spin-off kinda games like Fire Emblem and Hyrule Warriors. So you would think, with the huge success of those games, we would have received an English release of the Dragon Quest version, but uh, as of yet, no. It's been heavily rumored for years now. And if you go to GameStop's website, you can even find a 2021 listing for it. No, oh, yeah, right. And if you are a fan of the base games that these spin-off kind of games are based on, uh, Dynasty Warriors 9 is having an expansion called Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires, which will release on Switch next year. So 
Why? You know, I actually am a pretty big fan of Apex Legends. Out of all the Battle Royale games that came and went, that one was my personal favorite. So I was pretty excited to hear it was coming to Switch this year. And then it wasn't. As everything else seems to be, it was delayed until next year. Also now, it will release with a Champion Edition. The game is free to play, but if you drop 40 bucks on this pack, you'll unlock all 9 heroes, whereas while playing free, you would only have access to 4. So, as someone who just dropped 20 bucks on PC buying two of the characters, screw me, am I right? Braid was one of the first indie games to really blow up and garner critical acclaim. It was the first time I personally had ever been introduced to the concept of playing a smaller indie game rather than the AAA blockbuster titles I was used to. And it really opened my eyes as a gamer to new experiences. And the anniversary edition has improved visuals and an audio commentary, so buy it. If you didn't play the first Axiom Verge, do it before the sequel drops next year. It was critically acclaimed for its setting, weapons, boss battles, controls, and upgrades, so just literally every, the entire game. What, what do I even say about Genshin Impact that y'all haven't already screamed at me in the comment section of most of my videos? It seemed like everyone was begging me to play this game for like a solid week, so I did on Twitch, and then a week later, no one was interested in the game anymore. The internet has such a short attention span now. That said, I was actually having a lot of fun with the game, and it's supposed to be dropping on Switch. They haven't actually said when at all, but... You have to assume it's soon. If it's any later than 2021, that just seems like a wasted opportunity. Beyond a Still Sky is a 2020 cyberpunk science fiction adventure game and a sequel to the 1994 point and click adventure game Beneath a Still Sky. I love point and clicks. So here you go. Minico's Night Market has hours of exploration across four seasons, crafting, minigames, puzzle solving, and more in this cutesy, narrative-driven, social simulation adventure game. Fire was a recent announcement for the Nintendo Switch, coming early next year. Look at this guy, bouncing on walls, enemy slashing, flip-flopping all over the screen, and even these gnarly-looking boss fights. I got a good feeling about this one. She's a man to make you what? This game, where you play as a man-eating shark, was supposed to drop on Switch this year alongside the other consoles. But yeah, now, this happens all the time, where the game comes out and the Switch version is nowhere to be seen. So next year now, speaking of sharks, actually, a card shark. <laughs> this roguelike card game has an interesting art style that caught my eye, and maybe catching yours right now. Bear and Breakfast is a laid-back management adventure game where you play as a well-meaning bear trying to run a bed and breakfast in the woods. And do I have to say anything else? Garden Story is a social sim and adventure RPG where you play as a grape and you have a little cherry and frog friend. I mean, that's two cute ones in a row. Moving on. <laughs> All I know about Subnautica is that PewDiePie really seemed to like it and it has a 10 out of 10 on Steam. So it, it's probably good. It's an open world survival action game set in the ocean of an alien planet. Okay. Oh my gosh. I feel like at this point, not putting Bayonetta 3 or Metroid Prime 4 into a list called upcoming games for Switch just just feels disappointing. It just, it just hurts my soul. Yeah, all right. These games, who knows, right? Probably not next year. Probably not the year after, but if I don't put them in the list, the comment section down below will be like, yeah, you got me, you got And also, yeah, it just, it hurts, okay? It hurts. They're coming, soon, maybe, yes, yes. Right? I don't know. So, uh, Yokai Watch 4 already dropped on Switch in Japan in 2019, but but I, of course, screw us, right? Developers Level 5 announced a Western release back in 2019, but no new 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 but no new news yet. The rumor mill is saying next year now, and since this is a series I'm very curious about getting into, I hope it's true. It looks really fun. I don't understand why this game isn't more popular in Western markets yet. Anyways, same goes for Monster Hunter Stories, I guess. Hollow Knight Silk Song. This is another one that I couldn't leave off the list. While it does have a listing on Nintendo's website, it still doesn't have any date, not even a year. Probably safe to assume 2021, right? Zelda uh, Breath of the Wild 2. <laughs> it almost seems a little too hopeful to be getting a prequel to Breath of the Wild this month and still want the sequel next year. I mean, 
No. Okay. That said, uh, there are a lot of signs pointing towards this game probably coming out next year. It's a whole conversation I would love to get into. I will be making a video going in depth about why I feel like the sequel is coming next year and why I feel like we might get this Switch revision next year. But if you want to watch that video or any more of the videos I'm making for the rest of my life here on YouTube, you're gonna have to... Yeah, flip on that subscribe button and also get your little hairs all over that bell too. I hope you had a good time. I hope you found something you can be excited for. I hope you stick around for more videos that I make here on the channel. Follow me on Twitter, on Twitch, on other places. And I'll see you probably in a couple days with a new video. Bye.